Hello, I'm Matt Sconce, and this is a very simple and basic video showing you how to join a campaign using the above VTT extension in D&D Beyond. Let's start with going to D&D Beyond. So that's where we are right now. We've already installed the above VTT extension in our Chrome browser. We're going to come up here to collections and we've already clicked on the link and joined the campaign. So if you haven't done that, your DM should have sent you one. I send one in a Google Doc that you should have and you should have clicked on. And it lets you either create or add your character to the campaign. So once you have, you go to My Campaigns. You'll see down here, I have a couple different campaigns, but this is the one right here, Frozen Death. I click View Campaign. You notice that Bob, who you've seen, if you haven't seen the previous videos, check out the, the link coming up for those. But we created Bob. He was a human fighter. He's going to transition into becoming a samurai someday. And so he's level one right now. And this has, you know, the whole description of the campaign. And if you notice right here, it says above VTT, because we have that installed. And down here by Bob, it says join above VTT. So what this will do is it will join you to the virtual tabletop that your DM is using. So let's do that. Once this comes up, you just click off of this box. And you will see that currently the table that the DM has set up, which is myself, comes up. You can possibly hear the snow right now, but there is sound. It's an animated virtual tabletop right now. So the first thing you'll want to do is you want to come up here. You want to click on sheet and then you'll want to come up here to the gear and you'll want to go down and turn on measure while dragging tokens. That'll let you see how far you're moving. Then you can go back. If you see this little chat thing up here, it is basically the place where you see what's happening. Rolls, you can chat. It's a little chat window right here. But for now, I'm gonna close, and this is the characters that are playing, just so you see that. We have Bob right here, and then Mordecai is another character, and the DM. You can whisper to each other by clicking whisper. Um, but for now, we're going to hit this little arrow, which drops it down so you just see this. If you notice, there is already a creature lurking in the snow. You can't see what it is because its name doesn't just pop up, but it is something waiting for you. So what? the reason you don't see yourself yet is the DM has to add you. So if the DM adds you onto the board, you'll notice that you appear. And on your turn, which would come up in this little combat chart here, you'd see the order of people that are fighting. When it's your turn, you'd be able to move. So. How do you move? You click on your character and you drag to the places you want to go. If you notice, it tells you how far you can go. So if you have a movement speed of 30, it's going to let you move farther than that, but you only move 30. So I can move over here on my turn. I could move 10 feet, attack, and then move another you know, 20 feet to get away over here. So you can use your 30 feet of movement of walking speed however you want. Um, I just want to show you how each thing works. So say I said roll initiative. You would then go and click on initiative. Your dice would roll and I rolled a whopping one. The way you can see that is it shows up in this chat log that you have open. So I rolled a one. It's not super helpful but I did have a three. So because I have a three added to the initiative right here I rolled a four. So what that would do is it would put you on a combat tracker for your initiative as four. You see how that is? So if the creature rolls initiative, then let's see, creature rolls initiative and it would show up in your combat tracker and the DM rolls initiative for the creature. So the creature rolled an 18. So in the order of battle, the creature would go first and then would come Bob and all rolls would be over here. So let's close the sheet back down. You can also get rid of it right here if you wanted to. Um, but so say you needed to attack. So you would roll your, you'd go down to actions and you'd roll an attack with my longbow. So I'm gonna see if I hit. So I'd roll an attack. It would be a 12 plus whatever it was. So if you look, it would be 12 plus five because I have a plus five for my longbow which would be a 17. 
Now the creature, you wouldn't see this of course, but the DM would, the creature has an AC of 13. So because it does, and you rolled a 17, that means that you hit the creature. And so what you would do is you would then roll your damage. So here's your longbow, here's your damage. It's one D8 dice, so an eight-sided dice, plus three. So I roll my damage, and it is an eight plus three. So that is, do the math, do the math, an 11. You can either add it up, of course, or you can see here, the DM gets this on their feed as well. And then, so you did 11 damage. So the DM would remove 11, and little did you know that the creature only had 18, so you would almost have killed the creature that quickly. Um, it's a very, it was a very weak creature. So that's kind of how that works with damage. Once the creature's gone, you would watch it vanish. So you'd see it disappear and you will have deleted the creature. Actually, DM deleted it, but you will have beat it. So that's kind of how that works for the combat log. That's how it works for movement. This is all just the basics because the fun comes with the story, the characters and the DM, but that's kind of how it works. So remember, if you want to roll for attack, you click on these boxes. If you want to roll damage, you click on these boxes. Um, if you want to do a, a check, like say, oh no, you just felt an earthquake and an avalanche is coming, it's rolling towards you, you need to do a dexterity saving throw. Do you dodge it? If I said that, you come up here and you click on under saving throws, and it's a 12 plus three. That's a 15 saving throw. If the difficulty was only a 12, then you avoided the avalanche. If the difficulty was more than that, you did not avoid the avalanche, and then the consequences happen and the game goes that direction. So it's kind of awesome. Say you're like, I wanna go over here, and I wanna move this boulder. Well, if you wanna move that boulder, you absolutely can try. The question just becomes, are you strong enough to? So let's do a strength check, athletics. So down here, athletics, is like, I wanna lift that boulder. So say the DC on that, the difficulty was 20, because it's a heavy boulder. Let's see what you roll. So you rolled a nine plus five, it's a 14. So you fail at lifting the boulder. So that's kind of how all that works. It's very brief, um, shows you how to roll your checks down here, acrobatics, athletics, deceiving people. It shows you how to do the attack right here. You know, so you roll for attack. And then you, know, you got a 22 for attack. You roll for damage. And you got an eight plus three, so an 11 for damage. So all of that works. You can buy different dice on D&D Beyond if you don't like these dice, or you can also change your color. That's all in the actual D&D Beyond under managing your character. So that's briefly how you use above VTT and how your DM uses it, and you access the virtual tabletop. And that's it, there you go. Bob's gonna just kind of walk around his little movement there and be a happy character. Thank you so much, I hope that helps. Put any questions in the comments.